Right, so, so let's do this uh, this lab where we're going to look at malware detection and a little bit of firmware at, at, at the very end. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to download this uh, this program here as a standard uh, putty in, install. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to add uh, some malicious code to it uh, with the Metasploit. And then we'll see that the actual program uh, is a perfectly valid one, but uh, we'll actually have a reverse TCP connection installed in it. Okay, so so this is the MSF Venom here that we're going to do, the reverse TCP. And then we're going to call back to this IP address, which is going to be a Kali machine. We're going to call back on port 443, uh, and then we're going to create a program called Putty X E X E. Okay, so I've got my Kali machine here, and I've got my Windows machine. So I'm just going for Windows 2003 server just now, just because it's just convenient for me here. But there we are there. Okay, so this is going to be the machine that will actually run our putty from, uh, and uh, this will be the machine here that we're actually going to create our exploit. Okay, so I'll just, I'll just make myself uh, folder here just to keep it nice and uh, nice and clean so let's see if I can paste in there and that works great okay so I'm going to paste in from there that's our putty and here we are there okay so everything's fine up to now so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run MSF MSF Venom okay I just copy that and uh, I'll just go back to our Kali machine Let's paste it in. Mm, it's not really coming out very well there. Let's try again. And this time we'll just take this part here. And let's try again. So we'll just paste that in. Ah, it's just not it's not going so we'll just type we'll just type it in so it's m n m m s f venom minus p so this is the the payload which is going to deliver the interpreter uh payload to the device so this will actually add in the code that's required to do a, to do a reverse tcp connection and then we want our local host to be the IP address of uh, this Kali machine. So let's look at our, our so it's 10224. So our local host is going to be 10200.024. And we'll do a call back on 443. Okay, so the next thing we need is uh, we need to uh, get our additional code. So it's the minus E option and it's x86 minus E and it's x86 slash uh, kata G N E I and we're going to deliver an EXE, Windows EXE. We're going to have three iterations minus K minus X and putty here. And we're going to put that into putty x.exe. Okay, so later on in the lab, what we'll do is we'll create our snort rules to be able to detect uh, this. But let's go and see if we can create our exe. And what we'll do is once we've created our exe, we'll create our web site on Kali. And then from the Windows machine, we'll download our Putty EXE just to make it easy for us to to access it. So both the Windows machine and the Kali machine should be on the same sub network in this case. Okay, let's see. And yeah, success. And let's see. Uh, it's not quite what. Okay, and that's because I didn't get the local port option right. Okay, so just make sure that you check all of your options to make sure that it works. You should see it go through the three iterations and actually creating the EXE. It does take a, it does take a little minute to, to get it to, to work, but you should see a, a file that's just a bit bigger than the main PuTTY EXE. So PuTTY is the program that we normally, oh, that, that's fine. So that's, that's, um, 
that's worked perfectly. Okay, so now what we'll do is that we'll copy them, copy our PuTTY files into the var www folder. That's the root folder of the web server. So it's just going to make it easier for us to, to be able to send them over to uh, the victim machine. Okay, so there we go. There they are sitting there. And then what we'll do is we'll get our web server started up. Maybe that it's already started on this machine, but uh, let's go ahead and start our web server. And that's great. Okay, so looks just check that the web server is running. Okay, and uh, so we do HTTP. Then we'd go for localhost. Everything's running. Okay, so we can go for putty x exe should download them but we'll not do it from here because it's already on this machine okay so now what we'll do is we'll go to our windows machine and what we'll do is that uh, we'll go ahead and we'll download that exe onto our machine okay and we want to have a look at the message that's displayed okay so I think we're at 10 200 There we go. So that's the message there. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to download the two programs here. Okay, so let's download our valid one first. Okay, and let's run it. Runs great. Okay, that's what PuTTY looks like it's for SSH, Telnet type connections. And then we'll download the other one. And then hopefully that one will work too. There it is. Great. Okay, so you can see that's working. So this is the one with the exploit in it. Um, and uh, you see it just works just the same. So the next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at uh, binwalk and uh, see if we've changed the, the putty one that much. Okay, so there's what our binwalk one looks like, our putty, and then let's look at that one. So you can see there that there is an extra, uh, extra part of the, the binary here that's been added to it. Uh, the file is bigger by about 20k or so, 20k increase, that's that's uh, added in the, the payload. Uh, most of the other things have moved slightly on a little bit, but there's this extra little bit at the end here, which has really been added. Okay, so let's go back and have a look at our lab. Now what we'll do is that we'll have a look at the MD5 uh, signature of each one so hopefully mm, they will have uh, different md5 signatures so you should never trust an md5 never trust uh, an exe without its md5 signature because you can actually see that uh, an intruder could change the exe put a back door on it and you can see there's the difference there okay the file sizes are different there too so that uh, that's fine. Okay, so that's that part of the lab. So now what we'll do is we'll just set up our our exploit handler, just waiting for our connection. Okay, so we'll just set up our uh, our Metasploit console. It just takes a little minute. So while it's doing that. See if I can just copy and paste just to save time. This takes a little minute. Uh, so it's just the standard meterpreter. There is the payload that's going to deliver. Set local host to be the Kali machine, which is 24, I think, 10, 200, 0, 24. Set the port that we're going to connect into that it's going to listen on, and then we'll just sit and wait from there. Okay, so that's that's uh, just taking a little minute to start up. Okay, 
So what we should find is that uh, we can use the metapeter to be able to, to connect to the Windows machine and uh, should be good to go okay so we'll just uh, go ahead and just, just let me copy and paste there okay remember show your options to be able to have a look at uh, what options you need to set for that just in there show your options here yeah. Okay, we need to set a local post at local host and the local port. So the local host is uh, ten two hundred zero twenty four twenty four. Yep, zero twenty four, and we set the local port to be four four three. Okay, so good to go. That's great. Right, okay, here we go. Let's see if it's going to work. Uh, so we'll go back to our Windows machine and let's find our putty X. Okay, so are you ready? One, two, three. Ready, go. Perfect. Okay, so you can see what's happened. There's my putty session. Everything looks fine to me, but actually see what's happened over here. It's opened up a metapreter uh, session. Okay, so here's all the commands that uh, you see. Uh, so we can do all the usual things. Uh, we can have a look at the file system. There we go. I can move up and uh, so on. This is the Windows machine here. Okay, so so that so you can see that the this machine is working quite happily now, but there's actually a a connection made to the to the machine uh, that, uh, that allows us to get the interpreter to run. Okay, so the main thing we need to be able to see initially is is whether we have admin rights and that we see that we actually have. Okay, so what we're going to do next is that we're going to uh, set up our uh, key capture. Okay, we'll just look at our commands again. Okay, so it's the uh, key scan start. Yeah. Okay, so let me go over here. Uh, I'm just going to open up a notepad. So, hello, uh, are you? Yeah. And uh, just find our command again. So it's key scan dump. Key scan dump. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so you can see that. Okay, so let's go again. There we go. And uh, do it again. And there it is there. Okay, so we'll just stop that from there. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to actually have a look at is uh, we're going to get uh, going to create a file at the top level. So we'll just save that at the top level. So we'll call it my secret. File dot text. There we are. Okay, so there's there's the my my secret uh, file. there okay so we could download that if, if we wanted to uh, but uh, you see that uh, we've got access to the to the file system then so the next thing we'll do is that uh, we'll do a hash dump because 
we have admin access and then we'll just capture this stick it into stick it into a file oops let's try that again edit the copy and then now we just paste that in okay control x and there we go and then we just run join the ripper okay let's try that again it's uh, detected the wrong format there oops so let's let's go and hash Or add uh, format, so it's a, uh, uh, and it's an NTLM format that we have there for Windows 2003. So we'll make that format equals NT. Hash. So just let me. Okay, let's start again. Okay, so we've got uh, two passwords that it's had cracked there. Uh, we can see there's the first password and there's the second one there. Okay, so you can see what's happened is that because the the administrator ran the program, uh, there is the hash stamp has admin rights to it. So what we need to do now is to be able to have a look at our our hex editor uh, with inside our Windows program here. Okay, so you can actually see that uh, we should have lost our connection there. So once the exe is stopped, then uh, then there's not there's no connection onto it. So what I'll do is I'll just download a hex viewer here. I've downloaded the hex viewer. So what we want to do is to have a look at the difference between the two uh, files that that uh, we've uh, downloaded that we've the one downloaded and one we've created. Okay, so we'll just uh, we'll just grab our our files from here. Okay, so there's one and there's the valid one. Okay, so this is the uh, malicious one and this is the non malicious one. Okay, so you can see the they're similar for the starting point. And really what we want is to find an area of the of the code which is actually different. So we could maybe look at the, the bottom of the, the file there. And if you just have a look through, then uh, you should be able to see that there are some differences in the file. It's a bit difficult to see from, from here, but if you examine them, you should be able to, to look and see if there's any differences in the, in the hex uh, between, between the two. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to create a little uh, snort program to be able to see if we can actually detect when uh, 
the malware is, is triggering off there. Okay, so just let me create that. Okay, so uh, start minus W shows us their interfaces. So we're going to be using that interface there. And I'm going to start up our rules file. And just let me grab from this file here. Should be good to go. Okay, so all it's going to do is, is detect the 443 connection back to the server. So it's snort and then it's minus I1 and then it's minus C and our rules farm. Okay, we'll just create a log and then we should be good to go. Oops, <laughs> just uh, forgot to paste that little bit there. So just excuse that and uh, we should be go good to go this time. Okay, so now it's sitting waiting for that dial back connection. So then what we'll do is that uh, we'll just go here and now hopefully when we do our dial back and uh, here it is. There it is. That's great. So we'll just cancel. Let's stop our snort. And please let there be an alert. Yes. So uh, so we saw there there was there was actually an alert on it. A little error there. So let's open the Windows machine again. So we've got seven alerts there. So everything looks looks good. And uh, so we'll just go into a log folder. There we are there. Okay, so there's the triggering there. Look, see, see the connection that we've got from our port to port 443 on, uh, on the, that's the dial back that we actually saw. Okay, so it's doing a few connections actually there. So now what we'll do is that uh, we'll actually have a look to see if we can actually see the network packets to see our dial back actually really happening uh, when we do that. So we'll just start from there. There we go. Okay, just got a little bit of ARP there. So again, so what we'll do is we'll go back here, we go to our putty X, and there we go, door fire, there. Okay, so there we go. And uh, we'll just stop that. And let's see if we can see our connection. And there it is there. Okay, so there is our connection there. There's the sin happening from there. Okay, nothing really happens because in this case uh, we haven't actually set up the exploit again. So what we'll do is that uh, on Kali we'll just get set up again with our interpreter and we'll just get ready for it to happen and then we'll get a full handshake this time okay so let's go there we'll just 
clear that. Okay, this time, this time we're going to go for it, and we're going to do run that one. Run. Okay, just check. There's the interpreter fired. That's fine. So it looks as if we have actually captured it this time. Okay, so we'll just stop. And uh, you can actually see, hopefully we can see, it says it's encrypted, but don't, don't believe it because really it's uh, tricking uh, Wireshark there because it's, uh, it's 443, but it isn't really encrypted. It's just tunneling on that port because it knows that port's open. So if we follow the stream, there we go. Okay, so we can actually see uh, that there is some files getting transferred from here. Here is the payload for Meterpita getting uh, delivered. Okay, so that's the communication that we've got between uh, the, the Windows machine when it runs the PuttyX and the machine. So now what we'll try to do is we'll try and pick off uh, a string in there and we'll get that uh, we'll get that set up so we'll just have a look there we go so we'll have a look at the hex dump right so hex dump we'll go for this string here hopefully that's quite unique okay and then what we'll do is we'll set that up in the rules file So that's the content, and uh, we'll go for that hex string. Four, four, three. That hex string should be good to go now, hopefully. Right. So what are those? I'll, I'll I'll just erase the alert file so that we don't have the old one. Right, okay, so what we want to do, so just let me save that one for reference. Right, okay, so there's snot. Let's have a look at our rules file. Let's go to our Kali machine. Let's be waiting. And uh, that's good. So run that one again. Just we're fine. Okay, there's the connection. Everything's good there. So now let's look. That. Nope, didn't manage to detect it, which is unfortunate. Let's have a look at a rules file again. So we create the connection on 443. Let's have a look at our Wireshark trace again, just to make sure that we're getting the right string there.
hex dump. Uh, so the malware has obviously decided to change itself. Uh, so I'll give it one one more attempt uh, to see if we can pick up a basic signature of it. So this is from the stream before. So I, I'll just try one more uh, attempt from from them. So let's go for rich eight as a piece of text from from them. Let's see if that works. Okay, so that's on four four three. Oh, I know what we've done wrong. So, uh, uh, so we need to find that. We need to we need to see in which direction that we're going in uh, from from there. So that's for the sin. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at this this one here. Okay, so this is going to port four four three. And uh so there's a little sequence there. So so we'll just try zero zero fifty fifty six because that's actually going uh for uh, that's actually going to see which port that's going to destination is four four three. So zero zero fifty fifty six. Zero zero. So zero zero five fifty six, just check. So zero zero fifty fifty six. Right, so we'll try we'll try one more time. There's there's no guarantee that it doesn't actually change the uh, the code every time that we actually run it. So so where we want to be is uh, we'll start our Kali exploit again. Exploit. Okay, we we'll go back to our Windows. Go back to here, and then we'll just download this one again. See how we get on. Okay, bar up our snort. Let's see our rules. Right, so let's try this time. I'm just not uh, picking that up there for the for the alert and then file. So we'll just try one more time. So we'll go for rules, and then this time we'll go for rich eight. Eight was was our string that we saw in it, and let's just go for any just this just in case we're we're not picking up the port right then. Okay, I'll go back here. <laughs> Do that and go back here. Do that and then back here and do that. Okay, connections there. Ah, finally. Okay, so our hex one isn't quite working right there, but we can see if we pick off a string, then everything's fine. And there we'll have a look. And this time we've got something in our alert. There it's them. Okay, so so if you pick off um, just pick off an ASCII ASCII text value. Uh it could be that it's changing there, it could be the ports. Uh don't quite know. So there's the rich eight is actually picking up the uh the, the, the malware dialing back. So the next thing we want to do is to be able to detect it in transit. Uh, so what we'll do is that, uh, that's fine. So we're going to capture, capture our malware. 
And uh, so this time, capture. Okay, so we'll just go and we'll download it again from there. Sorry, that's let's start again. So that didn't that didn't download it. So let's start again. So what we want to do is to download it from the website. So I think that was ten two hundred twenty four party. There, okay. There, okay. Let's see if it's downloaded at this time. And there we go. Okay, so that's that's uh, downloaded the the file. So what we can try to do. So just let me save that. Save as Putty X. Okay, so let's follow the stream from there. Okay, so that's our request. So it's up to you what you take off and part of the stream. So you might just pick off some text with inside. It's like a unique signature from it. If we just go through there, I'm just going to pick off something here. Appreciate this might not be unique, uh, but uh, we obviously would would define our basic signature. So I just do that and then paste. And so remember, in this case, it will be. 80 that we're using uh, so if it's coming from the web server then that's port 80 there okay so let's go ahead again and run our snort here let's now download our program again and then let's quit to that And it's not picked it up. <laughs> so let's let's have a look at our rules file. Uh, it really depends uh, in which direction it's actually going. So we'll just give it a try. And there I'll we'll just detect the word unable. So we want our windows here and there. Try again. Okay, so we've picked up our, our alerts this time. Okay, I think you've got to look at the direction of the uh, the the ports uh, that we're actually using, you could detect the party ex dot exe if you wanted. So now we have a look at our alert file. And there we go. So it's picked up quite a few alerts this this time. Okay, so for the next part, if you do a gzip, then if you actually have a look at the gzip uh, header, you should be able to, to capture, uh, if we download it from uh, here, so we'll go back to our Kali machine. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so we'll do our gzip for putty.
and then we'll copy our putty to var www Okay, so next what we'll do is that, so that's fine, so what we'll do is we'll start a new one just to be able to capture the uh, magic number and a little signature of it. So we're going to start that one back up. Okay, so this time we're going to download from there and it's uh, putty, putty x dot e, putty x dot exe dot gz There we are. So there it's there. Okay, we can follow that stream now. And what we look for in our hex dump is a magic number. And if you look up the, the web page, the associated web page, you should be able to find the magic number of uh, of G gzip so we'll just have a look here so it's 1f 8b 08 1f 8b08. Okay, so there is our gzip there. Uh, we used to get a new line, character turn line feed just before it. Uh, and here is our gzip file. Okay, so again, we could actually just pull out uh, a part of, of this so that we can actually uh, detect with snort our, our file in there. Okay, so just let me save that. That's our putty. Jeez. Uh, we're just going to examine uh, some firmware for uh, for our for some of the details. So this is the firmware from an IP camera. So we'll just have a look to see uh, if we can actually look at the files with inside the firmware. Okay, so we'll just uh, try and find where we are. So there we are then. So let's open that up. Okay, so we're going to do it from here. Just extract that to our folder that we've created. Okay, so I've got my bin file. So then the first thing I do is to do a bin walk of my file. So this is the bin. This is the firmware for an IP camera. So we'll actually have a look to see what's in there. And from the bin file you can actually see there's a whole lot of uh, uh, folders in this case uh, system so see if we get that better there there we go okay so we can see the system www system init uh, system wireless and and so on okay so now what we'll do 
is that uh, we'll see if we can extract our uh, our firmware. So then uh, we can do that with this command. into a zip file image.zip ok so there's image.zip and what we'll do is we'll unzip image.zip and it'll create all the folders for it so it's created system, wireless, system, system uh, and so on so what we'll do is that uh, we'll have a look to see if we can find our daemon so I used find normally. So I want to find my daemon. This is D A E. There. Minus print. I think. Oops. Minus print. And there it's there. It's in system system bin. And there we go. Okay. So if you do a, a cat or a nano, uh, or we do more, let's try more on our demon. Uh, there you go. So it's a, a lot of it's binary, but there you go. There's uh, lots of messages in there. So then if you just keep moving through the file, then hopefully you'll find uh, there is an area of the file here. Okay, slash etc. There we go. Look. <laughs> Up to there. Okay, so you should find that that's, that's from the etc. password file. And we can just copy that out from there. There you go. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so how easy was that? Okay. So you can see by looking at the firmware, we can actually go through the file and there's lots of text in there. In this case, whoever created the firmware actually included the etc. password file. And we can see just by carving it out, we can actually get the, 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 the password. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go into uh, the proc folder. And uh, we'll have a look in the version there. So there's the version of Linux that we have there. And we'll have a look at the CPU information. There's something on the CPU uh, that we have. Okay, so finally, final thing, I'm going to try and find the thing that makes the camera start. And it's called ipcamera.shell. And it's in root system in it. And there it's there. Okay. So this is the thing that actually starts up and quite it's quite scarily, it's actually starting up a Telnet daemon for the IP camera 
and starting up the daemon that we saw before and a few other things like a gmail thread okay so this has been an introduction into our malware analysis and firmware analysis